Good evening, viewers, and you're very, very welcome to Live in Leash. And we have James McInerney back on the show. James, a little bird tells me you have in been incredibly busy since the last time you've been on. Can you tell oh, the viewers Dan. what you've been up to? <laughs> oh, well, thanks so much for having me again. It's great to see you. And time really does fly when you stay busy, I suppose. Um, it's been a whirlwind. It's been a whirlwind since last, last autumn, I think we spoke. And... I say in the last 10 months, just the work I think started from after post glow up. Like I feel I had to work 10 times harder after the show, just on so many opportunities I've been given between content creating for online, um, returning back to London, working freelance as an artist, kind of getting back into the employment environment, just like all of us post kind of the, the harder part of the pandemic. And yeah, just amazing opportunities and constantly kind of growing i can't believe it's well into really over a year since it all kind of kicked off for me yeah i mean just to give the viewers an understanding of how busy you are we're actually cutting into your prep time because you <laughs> have to get ready now for a show in cork at four o'clock this afternoon correct that's right yeah we have rehearsals this afternoon but i'm down in the river lee in cork and i'm part of a drag club kid culture night called Makia. It's a drag house name in Cork. And we're doing a performance in Fitzgerald's Park this evening. It's a sold out event. And I was lucky enough to have a brunch, drag brunch performance two weeks ago in Cork, having never really gone south from Leash for performances. And I have to say the, you know, drag scene and kind of the queer community down here has been so welcoming, so inviting. And it's great to be able to kind of get out and travel other parts of the country and be able to have, you know, it easy accessible from Leash. So every day there's something going on. <laughs> Great. So you're falling in love with Cork. Ah, uh, but my heart's always in Leash, John. Yeah, good, good, good to hear <laughs> it. And of course, you're now the face of uh, Second Hand September, James. What's that all about? That's right. So we are collab I was collaborating with Thriftify.ie, which is an online pre-love fashion website. And it is essentially an online resource for charity shops and sourcing out pre-loved secondhand fashion and for September we're really pushing the secondhand September campaign where everyone we all see the carbon footprint from purchasing with fast fashion how it is having climate change effects and just trying to raise awareness around the importance of rediscovering and kind of investing in sustainable well sustainable lifestyle living in this particular circumstance sustainable fashion and thriftify has been established for the last three years now. And this campaign, we're really pushing for September for so many more people just to get involved and think a lot more sustainably. So with all types of purchases, be it, you know, secondhand items, accessories, obviously there's a big push in secondhand fashion. I, for one, as a drag artist and well, as a makeup artist and having always had a passion for drag, I've always actually resourced a lot of my materials from charity stores from hand-me-downs, from second-hand sources, and it kind of always helps keep the creative motive and concept going. So I thought it was a great collaboration to work with Thriftify and just really, you know, push hard with the importance and also, I think, just the easy access to being able to live more sustainably nowadays. It's a great message and not before time. Mm -hmm, exactly. So, you know, while we have you know, the time to hopefully reverse some of what, you know, has impacted in our climate, in our world, and also how we live. It's just a really great campaign to shine a light on what was originally kind of, I felt like an alternative way of living. It's kind of becoming more of a, you know, a conscious standard decision. Like when I think about purchasing any clothes, anything for drag, or even my personal life, I am thinking so much more sustainable and just gear, like veer towards, secondhand stores and charity shops but then obviously with the pandemic when we had very little access to restrictions to physically go into shops that's where Thriftify has become such an online vital resource and it's accessible you know you can shop for secondhand clothes from home that's great that's great and are my sources correct in saying there may well be an Irish glow up spin-off James <laughs> there is so it is been in the workings it has been produced and the advertisements are out now glow up ireland starts on rt2 at 9 30 
this coming Thursday, the 2nd of September, and hosted by Maura Higgins. It's the same concept where there is 10 budding Irish makeup artists. I know the feeling really well, and I think it's something that I'm so happy. I can't express how happy I am to see this come to Ireland because the talent that is in the country and, you know, across all counties of Ireland, it's just there to be discovered. So it's amazing that two years ago from when I would have competed on the BBC version, I would have always have dreamed about being able to do it on my home homeland. So I'm just really happy for all aspiring makeup artists out there that this is now an opportunity and a chance. And it's just great as a country because we have such deep engraved, you know, artistic, cultural history and makeup art, you know, goes beyond just a little bit of lash and liner. What, what I think you're going to see is going to be outstanding and you'll be able to see that this talent comes from, you know, our own country. And can you tell, are you allowed to tell the viewers what your role will be? Um, I, it's not confirmed if I have any input with Glow Up Ireland. I just have advice for the contestants that, you know, I remember doing the show and competing and I think that these contestants need to really take all the opportunities that will come from having this exposure I wish them the best of luck, but I highly encourage, you know, everyone out there to really watch this show. I think it's going to be something really new and fresh. It's a great decision by RT to have it on the national broadcaster to showcase this talent and also put makeup art artistry as a professional industry really on the map. Because I found I didn't have much inspiration even when I was kind of training and learning and growing up. And I'd like to think that there are a lot, you know, so much young people out in the country that at 17 or 16 they could trust that this is definitely 100 percent a professional career that is viable it's totally accessible and flow of ireland is going to be a great platform to showcase this to well all generations it's so you'd be so amazed by who contacts you who will fall in love with watching it and who might see makeup in such a totally new light um so everyone should watch it because it'll be full of surprises Full of surprises. And of course, speaking of surprises, by the time our wonderful viewers get to watch this interview, you'll be back in London. What's happening over there? <laughs> I will. It's a busy time. I've been really fortunate that I got to kind of go between the UK and Ireland for the last couple of weeks. Um, now that travel has been a little bit more easy with less restrictions, and it's kind of back to a pattern that I had worked in a lot pre-COVID, where I was had some work in Ireland, some work back in the UK. I had moved back for work in May and then I came home at the start of August and I'll be back and forth. But, you know, I always find there, well, you know, Leash is where the heart is, but then there has been some amazing opportunities given to me now that the both countries have been able to open back up a little bit more. And it's just kind of, it keeps my own career path constantly evolving. I, I've been doing campaigns and work that I never would have imagined even after Glow Up had happened, that kind of big question of what happens next. And I really find that this now, next 12 months, is like a new era of life post the show, creating my own kind of, you know, niche in the industry and discovering what I, you know, I'm going to focus more on or what type of work I'll even get into. It's happening all the time. I just can't believe we literally have three months left in this year. <laughs> I know. And I mean, I mean, your your hard work, I mean, is paying off. You deserve every bit of success you're getting because I'm just get, getting dizzy just from chatting you now, with you now. You're here, you're Cork, you're Leash, you're London. It's great to see it. Oh, listen, it's a skinny diet. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> Alex. good. And, you know, I think it's just because I've just had this opportunity and, you know, when you were giving an opportunity like this just to, Take, like, take the best, healthiest kind of advantage of it and it'll only you know, benefit you in the long run in a good way because there's, like I said, there's so many campaigns that I've got to do from modeling, from actually working as a makeup artist, and then you know, being a brand representative for a campaign and then being able to have the choice to lead things that matter to me. That's kind of a great space to be in where I have worked with Triptify before I've been you know a consumer of theirs I've, I've bought stuff from the website I've so much pre-loved secondhand fashion my mother all my aunties and cousins and families have always been such a hand-me-down resource even my drag has always been secondhand and what we did for Triptify's campaign was all secondhand fashion but worked into my drag so it just shows how it's so accessible for everyone 
And that's why we really want people to get behind Secondhand September. With online, if you do hashtag Secondhand September, Thriftify are going to pick at the end of the month their best hashtag Secondhand September find from someone out across the country and they'll win a fantastic staycation prize soon to be announced. So it's just keep creating the awareness like any good cause. It's all about getting out, reaching the people. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. And hopefully, James, we can have you back on closer to Christmas. Indeed. Again. Yeah. And, and or, you'll be able to fill us uh, up fill, fill, uh, and fill us in on what you've been up to. I mean, <laughs> we just can't, we can't keep up with you. It's great to see it. Oh, sure, listen, I'm trying my best, but I think the one priority is I always try to make time to make sure that I can get home and, you know, have such time spent in leash. And I've gotten to do some great initiatives, actually, with the Dunamay's Arts Council. I did a workshop part of the Creative Arts Project, and we did a workshop back in June um, with Leash Creative. And I just want to say a huge thank you for that opportunity, where I was creating makeup using natural resources, kind of like a big feature that I know we discussed about before. And it was a huge fundamental for where I created so many of those looks online during the pandemic. Half of my materials we sourced from the back garden or around the Abilene's woodland. So it's always a matter. And I was in London at the time. No matter where I am, I still, you know, have that connection to home. So it's just a great kind of, I'm very grateful for that opportunity. Great. Well, James, you're a great ambassador, not only for Abilene, but also for Leash. So well done. Thank you so much, John. And yeah, I can't wait to have another check in a cup of tea chat and <laughs> see what else we can reveal at a later point brilliant brilliant so wonderful